Hello, viewers. This is Dr. Kim Sejin. This is case discussion to discuss challenging cases, and we have invited uh, masters uh, to uh, share solutions uh, to the problems. Dr. Kim Kyung Won, Yang Seung Min, and Park Jung Hyun. Nice to see you all. Hello. Let's see today's case. 62-year-old female, no prior history, as a PDH for number 36 and 37. Um, she had implants and she came because uh, the prosthesis was moving and there was a uh, uh, bleeding on the uh, uh, gin, uh, uh, gum on 37 and 36. Uh, there was dissemination and for 36 and 37, for 36 crown and the 37 implant, uh, it uh, all failed and number 36 and 37 were removed to use the abutment again. So the inquiry is as follows. Um, I have not much experience of implant as I have no experience at all with GBR. So this is my question. For uh, number 37, can I place single implant? And if it's possible, what will be most predictable socket preservation method? Now, using bio collagen and bio guide, or Osmond collagen, uh, the uh, genograft uh, plug type. And so, what is the difference between number one and two? And the third question is if there's any way to place single implant on number 37, let me know. So, what do you think of this case? Now, looking at this case, I believe the, rather than doing bone graft uh, well, uh, looking thoroughly on the case is more important, looking at the x-ray to see whether I can use the residual bone. Uh, even if you create the bone, um, it's better to use residual bone that has better quality. So if you extract implant in number 36, uh, it will be very a simple case. You wait a few months and deliver implant, then you don't need maybe bone graft. But if number 36, the patient do not want to remove it, still, uh, after extracting, if you wait for two months, and as I indicated in the panorama, uh, you know, if we place implant leaning toward the residual bone for the internal conical type imprint, uh, you know, without going three millimeters, it's retained very well. So maybe only doing distal bone grafting with that will be okay. Let's look at another simple case. I think it's a similar situation. The tooth was uh, extracted too uh, late, so there's a lot of uh, fracture. So using residual bone, I uh, only did the distal bone graft. And with the existing um, implant, I did also augmented the prosthesis and number 36, uh, there will be another um, implant. So there could be a simple approach. Using the residual bone as much as possible is is my uh, point. Now looking at this uh, case, I think uh, the focus is kind of in this uh, difficult area. Can I place um, implant? So I'm not trying to encourage you, but if I just say, tell you as is, as Dr. Park said, you know, placing implant on the existing bone will be an option. Another one is creating bone where there is no bone and then adjusting position could be another way. Since you say you are not very experienced, then, you know, this is not but not a difficult uh, surgery. So if you have a good treatment plan, I believe um, you can achieve your goals. So I will explain more while uh, looking at cases a bit later on. And Dr. Kim, now what I felt 
is that you know these days this type of peri implantitis uh, is kind of common. So looking at this case, you know the, what to do about the implant in the front. I'm a bit concerned, and even that implant, maybe removed and uh, would be better personally. And also, with some teeth is still remaining, and because of that, the, you have there is a residual space. So maybe that's why they placed uh, a bit wide. So as Dr. Park, if you put it uh, a bit too close to the bone, then maybe uh, if you do that, then you have to extract the wisdom uh, teeth or tooth. So uh, how did this uh, three masters solve these cases? Maybe Dr. Park, you can go first in terms of your solution. Actually, this is uh, my curiosity. So I would like your um, input. Is the implant fail because of there is a dissemination or implant failed and it became un um, unstable and that's why there was a cement uh, wash? I don't really know looking at it. It's like chicken or egg first question. But I I think, um, looking at the case that was sent in, the graft materials are not in place. That means that, you know, about 10 years ago, not this doctor, but other dentists did the surgery, and the GBR at the time was not very stable. And because of that, you know, there could be some uh, contamination, and there were bone loss as a result, and that's why uh, it became um, unstable, hence resulting to dissemination. That would be my um, conjecture. I mean, I would, don't know for certain, but I felt that the implant front and the back, uh, they didn't place it uh, simultaneously because it's in different design and um, one implant failed and maybe was delivered again with new implant. Maybe that was the case. Well, that's very sharp. <laughs> well, I have asked that question because looking at this case, I think maybe implant was removed too late. So, I mean, I think that dissemination came a bit later. Implant failed first, and while it failed, you know, uh, the patient felt discomfort because there was mobility as a result of dissemination. So, you know, uh, not removing implant until the last moment is something I want to talk about. I have a similar, uh, uh, you know, experience. This is not what I've done, but um, the biggest difference between the uh, prior case is when implant was removed. So, uh, leaving implant uh, uh, until it uh, is unstable and removing it can become really challenging. So, you have to explain to the patient, even if the patient doesn't uh, feel discomfort. So you have to uh, take a proactive action. So, you know, implant on the front side. I also want to remove it, as Dr. Kim said, but persuading um, that was not easy. So s using smart brush, you do some uh, uh, treatment and cleansing, it would be better. But with the bonus remaining as it and then delivering final prosthesis, I think um, it would not be very good. So Dr. Yang, uh, in terms of uh, uh, peri-implantitis, what to do? I mean, you are expert uh, in this area. I just use smart brush. Actually, when you talk about peri-implantitis, uh, there is not only biological issues, but depend rather than uh, looking at the cause, uh, you also have to think about the prosthesis. Now, it's number 36. If you look at the contour on the distal side, now the prosthesis uh, contour is it you know cleansed up or not is something you need to think about for th number 37 uh, you know there would be open embrasure on the uh, next to it probably and probably uh, in this case uh, it would have been better when you create prosthesis the distance you know if it's wide, then the top part 
like prox you have to create space where proxa brush can go in so that there could be a thorough cleaning would have been better i mean it was done very well but uh, cleansing up there or not would determine the prognosis of number 36 i think that is important yes i'm learning a lot today so another similar case and uh, I think uh, another difference with the inquired case is that, you know, was the uh, implant failure first or cement wash first? I think for this patient, cement wash was first because the abutment uh, is short and I didn't do any sand blasting and there is no groove. But a uh, patient came with the cement uh, washout and came immediately after implant failed. So it's just a simple case. I place another implant. What I want to say here is that uh, patients, you know, uh, removing the implant because it's an extreme situation, waiting until then is not good. You have to remove it as soon as possible. That would be better. So here, it's a really uh, bad uh, situation. So. For this case, um, you know, preserving extra ex extraction socket would be good, but um, I wasn't uh, confident about that, so I approached uh, differently. There was a residual bone, and I did three weeks later bone grafting and, you know, delivered implant. Uh, uh, and so that was a uh, bone grafting and uh, temporary with two implants. So for 18 months, then a uh, patient didn't come back. So then temporary broke. Maybe I created a temporary too well so it could withstand uh, very long so but it has been helpful because it took uh, time I could wait a lot uh, of time and the uh, conditions became better so deliver another implant and final prosthesis after 18 months this is CT I took so compared to the initial uh, difficult uh, challenging situation it has become um, much better so it's good if you could do socket preservation but i'm not confident in that so i wait until there's a soft uh, tissue healing and then do bone grafting and deliver implant that is the way i prefer so even if you wait for this case i don't think the bone will fill up so for this situation also you first do bone graft and i wait so the bone is good form so i didn't use membrane i just uh, uh, did bone graft so i have a question to dr kim so in this situation soft uh, tissue closing is easy but without bone grafting uh, just uh, putting a uh, covering it with the resorbable membrane what would uh, happen you know just isolating isolation so the so soft uh, tissue would be removed but only covered with membrane so and just feel, let it fill with blood I think it's possible, but if you are opened up anyway, and to make it more predictable, filling up might be better. But for this case, I would, in the past, I would have used autobone, but uh, nowadays, the, as uh, wall is open, allogenic bone uh, using that might be good. So I was curious, you know, what would happen if you just fill it blood? Yes, anyway, thank you for that answer. Now, after four months, it filled with the bone very well. The phone was good. And another thing I want to say here is that the bone uh, seems to form the well well but don't use bone grafting as much as possible use uh, laser bone as much as possible that will give you good better result so you place implant where you can uh, use the residual uh, bone better and then deliver final prosthesis so and so if I may also ask another question. Now, placing implant on the grafted bone or leaning toward your uh, kind of the patient own bone, what would happen? Would the result be the same if you place even six millimeter implant? Well, actually you augment with the bone grafting, but patients, uh, if you use a patient host bone, you will give you better result because bone grafting then remodeling doesn't finish you know within six months so even after that due to different reasons contamination or peri-implantitis if that happens then the host bone and then grafted bone uh, in the reaction will be different in my opinion 
Hence, uh, if possible, the host's own bone. Using that, I do believe is very important. Thank you for that answer. <laughs> then, um, another uh, case, a bit different case. There was a lot of bone resorption, so I could not place implant immediately. Uh, waited for 3.5 months, but still, uh, you know, not enough. So I did bone grafting for CT. Looked okay, but in this case, I didn't use membrane. Uh, and when you don't use membrane, because you know whether you use the auto uh, bones or uh, whether it was uh, filled up very well, there could be other factors. But on the buccal side, if you don't use membrane, uh, in the grafted bone quality, I believe, is a bit lower. So another question here. So what do you think? Now, when you only do bone grafting on the buccal side, if you don't use membrane, would that play a role? Because bone quality doesn't look good. Uh, about the quality, bone quality, I do believe article is already available. If you do only bone grafting, yes, bone is generating, generated, but when in terms of using uh, membrane, in terms of new uh, bone formation, uh, it's better for quality if you use membrane. So in terms of quality, uh, using membrane is more favorable. Of course, uh, there's a primary closure and within the bone, uh, within the defect, uh, there could be bones, yes, but uh, before, if you look at when, before grafting, there was no buccal plate. So if you put particular plate there, would the bone uh, stay stable there? Uh, on that question, I think it would be helpful if you could use membrane. So uh, viewers looking at our cases, please use uh, membrane. That would be my recommendation. But anyway, luckily, uh, it healed very well, and final thesis was delivered, and it's been 3.5 years, and it's been uh, maintained quite well. And after three years, six months, this photo, so it's a panorama photo, but it's clean, and even on the CT, there's no much change you will see on x-ray. So... This is uh, another, uh, you know, it's a very extreme case for this patient now had a dental insurance. So have to wait for two years. So as is, you know, it was really bad uh, before two years, but, you know, persisted, uh, just stayed for two years. Uh, so it was difficult uh, situation, but same bone grafting uh, and, you know, after extraction, six weeks. So in case of buccal side like this, I used uh, resorbable membrane and using membrane, I always had a better bone quality. So for this extreme case, you do bone grafting first and then deliver the implant. So grafting and then doing um, implant, uh, I uh, do that because it's easier. If you do other ways, implant and then grafting, I think it's more challenging. And then final prosthesis was complete. Of course, there's a lot of bone resorption. So position is not that good. So I had to use custom abutment. But be compared to where we started, it was uh, really good. And number 37, I also did bone grafting first. So even with just bone grafting, using membrane, uh, the bone form being given not very good, it can have a uh, favorable result and compared to the beginning and uh, it's much more stable now so summary now number 37 single implant is it possible on the question luckily it's uh, far away so for this case i think waiting for eight weeks and then doing surgery i think it might be feasible residual bone needs to be used as much as possible i think that is the important point that's more important than bone grafting and, you know, bone grafting and then waiting uh, sufficiently and delivering implant again, I think will be easier. And as, as Dr. Kim Kyung said, extracting number 36 would make it easier. And what I really want to say is that if there is a problem with the tooth or implant, removing as soon as possible would make everything much easier. That's it. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Park, uh, thank you for asking a lot of questions. Yes, I learned a lot. Then Dr. Kim Kyung-won, please. Well, for me, 
I think uh, for the inquired uh, case uh, in terms of socket preservation, you know, uh, you know, using membranes uh, for uh, grafting or not was the question. I don't have much uh, experience in socket preservation, so I think Dr. Yang can answer that. So I actually talked about similar case and looked at the past cases and the, I looked at the one case where the autogenous block bone and allo, uh, block bone was used. So this is a 2005 uh, patient. So on number uh, 36 and 40 was missing and uh, number 37 was missing and I could place implant immediately. And for number 47, uh, you know, the bone quality was bad and the inferior nerve was too close. So on the second panorama, on the ramus side, auto block bone was removed and on the extract the socket um, as an innate graft I filled it in and from there after time like this about 5.5 minutes later you can see it's healed and then at eight months later I um, that I placed it and he was really busy person doing his own business so didn't come to the clinic um, often uh, came after two years after auto bones about one year ten months but it was retained very well so in the follow-up a period after two years or five months actually on the back side number 47 on front of it number six started to go uh, bad and after about five years eight uh, months of surgery number six became really a problem so it, it even hurt number seven where we did bone grafting so we extracted the tooth and on that extraction side actually block bone graft was what I thought but the patient you know and removing bone was really uh, difficult so he wanted another uh, option so looking at the CT after five uh, 11 months ago five years 11 months ago the you know bone graft implant is retained very well but if you compare to the opposite side as there was an infection in this area the bone uh, alveolar bone inside there's a sclerotic uh, changes uh, compared to the opposite side so there is a deep Effect. And the patient really did not want to uh, remove his own bone. So allogenic uh, block bone is what I use. So for this patient, on number six, allogenic bone grafting was done. And then about five months later, implant was delivered. And now what I feel is that autogenic, compared to autogenic black bone, allogenic block bone has its own constraints. But fortunately, in the follow-up period after that, you know, there were other implants that were placed. But in the last follow-up, it's a 2017. And, you know, first you had the autogenic block bone and for 11, for about two, 12 years ago, and then allogenic or block bone, five months, uh, years, uh, 10 months later, so the implants is maintained quite well. But if you look inside, allogenic block bones, uh, bone quality is a bit uh, inferior so for one patient in the very adjacent um, area uh, autogenic uh, block bone and allogenic block bone were all done so for this case as I said uh, before the collagen mixed uh, you know uh, material is not what I often use so I often use uh, you know auto bone or allo bone um, grafting so for this case uh, number 36 after removing that tooth as you can see there is a defect and on that side I did bone grafting on the extraction socket on the bottom side where you touch the host of bone allogenic bone grafting was done on the top part more genogenic well, bovine was uh, covered and the collagen member uh, covered and then placed uh, implant and you know processes are used quite uh, well uh, I didn't you know but could not find the photos but for me so if I do socket preservation, I often use, uh, you know, sandwich graft or layered graft between aloe bone and um, deno uh, bones using them. So I think very similar uh, case to the inquired case is what I uh, recently done. So let me share that.
For this patient, uh, it's July uh, this 2021, so very recent. It number, it's a very young patient. Uh, he is uh, 35 years old and had us implant seven years ago. But uh, discomfort, uh, there's no pain, and implant was not, uh, uh, you know, shaky. But the uh, there is a swell swelling and inflammation. So that's why he came to me and. Uh, looking at the CT, there was a really wide implant, and uh, number 37 and number 36, alveolar bone has been fractured, especially on 36. So if you let it be, the bone will only go uh, worse. So as you can see here in the bite force on the ceramic is also fractured so i saw the gingiva was very much swollen so the, the decide to bring two implants so it's implant that's been loaded for seven years and also integration uh, is still there so that's it was not uh, easy to remove then i could not use the fr kit so let's look at the video it's a video of the surgery and as you can see, when you open the uh, gingiva, there is a bone defect. And I put in elevator, but it didn't move. So inevitably, high-speed bar was used. So possible the cortical bone, um, I tr tried to uh, not touch that. And then um, uh, removed one. And for you know 37, it didn't move. Also, so again, high speed bar was used, and but you know the uh, bone later was moved, removed more easily. Unfortunately, there was some bone removed, but the lingual plate uh, was not destroyed. Destroyed. So osseointegration integration is uh, still very uh, good. And then allogenic powder bone bone chip was um, uh, put in, and then on top of the general grafting with the bovine bone, and on the covered with the collagen membrane, and uh, you could say it's a socket preservation. So that's how the surgery was done. So for me, as I said before, looking at this case, uh, you know, the implant that was on front, I've been a bit concerned because uh, if you only do the backside, what if the front one becomes an issue? So like this, two implants removed, and then they're using the allograft and xenograft uh, thing, and then the you know, collagen membrane was covered. So, you know, it's a recent case, so I didn't uh, place implant again. But on the lingual side, uh, there is a cortical bone. Uh, then that's when you need to remove them. As Dr. Park said, when you decide to remove it, then as soon as possible, removing is much better than wait. And I think uh, if necessary, maybe for the inquiry case, you do bone grafting first. And in terms of bias collagen, uh, Dr. Yang uh, could talk a bit more about that. Uh, Dr. Kim Kyung Won, you know, you, you removing the big fixture or implant, uh, you used high speed burr? Yes. For that type of case, you know, re you have to uh, retain the existing bone. But this is a really wide um, implant. So with the EFR, I could not really uh, remove that. And it's, it's also because there's also integration. So, uh, but I remove implant quite a lo lot. So uh, using a very, uh, you know, sharp official bar with the long bar, bar. So close to long implant fixture and not to damage your own bone is how I approach it. And in extraction also, elevator going in and trying to grab back room would be easy. But here, number six was hard to remove because there was a the bone resorption. So elevator could not really, uh, you know, uh, hook something. And seven, uh, I just uh, hit it and there was a back room when the elevator went in. So it was easily uh, removed. So, you know, trying to, uh, you removed it quite easily. I could see that, see that smoothly. Thank you. So, Dr. Yang? Well, for me, as two uh, dentists uh, really talked, or masters, uh, you know, explained very well. We looked at, you know, different cases, like, but in the inquired um, case, 
uh, you know, what to do when the bone is not filled. I'm going to focus on that. On number 47, um, implant, there is a bone loss, and whether to remove implant or not, basically, the if it more than half of the bone loss uh, compared to the fixture length, then you remove it because then managing it becomes difficult. Um, for Dr. Kim's case, I would have removed two because if it's too thick implant, then certainly it's going to be a problem. So bone loss continues, is uh, that is obvious. So in that case, be it buccal or lingual, if there's a one still uh, kind of alive, then remove it and you know try to form a bone there. It might be better approach. But for this for this case, the based on the your own principles, uh, yeah, or my our own principles, uh, we had to remove it, so removed it. And if you look at inside of the implant, it's a typical peri implantitis on the buccal side. You see, you know, if you press, then there will be some pus uh, coming out for, for sure. So after removing crown, using EFR kit, a removed implant. And in that situation, so you looked at the bone defect. You know, nowadays I don't open flap a lot, but at the time I opened the flap and as a inquired a case said, bios collagen, and you know, membrane also was used again. Biocollagen was used, and one I could use one whole um, a chunk, but I did not that. I divided. I put one on the play side. There was no lingual plate, so I put one on the lingual place. There's no buccal plate, so place one on that plate too, and also one in between. So you can put in just you know big chunks, but if you uh, can also do that in terms of that divisions. Though depending on the defect, you could just put one in, or you could also divide it up and pl uh, put it in. In this case, I divided up, and after covering the membrane, I sutured, and after a time, uh, it was healed. So, the if you see bone status, there's a compared to bone loss, uh, you see bone uh, forming. So in that uh, case, you can you know deliver implant very easily. So so is it socket preservation or bone grafting? There are different terminologies used, but uh, when it comes to socket, you know you could also say socket augmentation. But we need to uh, say that this is from the wider meaning. It's bone grafting, but that you can do after extraction or after extraction, as Dr. Park said, you wait until soft uh, tissue heals. So dentists. Whatever is easy approach for you, you should just opt for that. So this is implant delivered. And as you can see, within the bone, you see it's healed quite well. So very simple implant delivery. And you know, patients not coming back. I think no good is a good news here because uh, he's not coming back because there's no discomfort. So implant uh, was removed and you can do like this but the inquiry case is implant has already been removed and then whether you do socket preservation or not but i think the exact term is whether you want to do bone grafting or not because it's tooth has already been extracted so looking at this case if there is an end of failure and the teeth tooth was uh, removed and you know See, you can see if you let it be, um, you know, would it heal? And you know, are you going to let it be, or knowing that it will not be healed with the extraction? Are you going to do socket preservation, or you cannot do soft uh, tissue management? So after six or eight weeks, weeks of extraction, do bone grafting. So there are very similar cases like that. It's a 2014 uh, paper from Seoul National University. After extraction. The bone um, is not being filled. So after removing implant, you know, like in credit case had no bone filling. So here, buccal and lingual plates are still there, but inside the granule tissue, there is a bone. After nine months and after 12 months, still no, no. 
Then, rather than just waiting, I believe that on the left case, you could maybe wait because the plate is still there. But on the right case, after 12 months, there is no filling and there's also no plate. So you have to take some action. So in this article, did if you remove it due to periodontal reasons, the bone might not be filled. In that case, after extraction, you have to take some action. That's what the literature says. So look at the status. So in the extraction socket, it needs to be healed. Uh, and it didn't heal what to do. That was the focus of literature. Then you have to do something. So for that case and this case, if you apply that into inquired case, waiting would not help the situation. So preemptively, proactively, if the soft tissue is healed in, with opening of the flap, you remove things in there. And as two doc doctors said, if you do bone grafting, I think it will be easy um, later on. So for this case, number 35, would it fill up? Uh, there's no lingo or buckle plates. It just, you know, uh, there's no uh, anchor. Then maybe grafting first would be better. So here it doesn't really look there's a problem if you look at number 35. But after extracting, a perio situation not very good. Then I didn't use BIOS collagen. I only use BIOS. BIOS and then the membrane was used. I mean, this is uh, something I use a lot now. But at that time, I didn't use membrane, but had uh, used only primary closure. And then later, uh, a different method was used. But after that, if you take CT, plate, uh, uh, you know, and co contouring can be visible. And based on that, there was healing. After that, based on prosthesis plan, you know, you know, other tooth was uh, removed. And if you open the flat, the bone has been filled quite okay. So if that if use the uh, procedure that you're familiar with and confident with and be it socket preservation or after or bone graft after healing if the think the one will not be generated then preemptively i think grafting should be the option so what should be the judgment criteria how would you know the bone will fill or not in my opinion as i said before there are different tips you know do if you Buckle plate, the lingual plate is there, and the parent, there are periodontal issues, uh, then there will be no bone filling. So you need to do something. You have, you know, there was CT taken. So I think there will be no filling there. Then preemptively bone grafting would be better. And uh, in the required case, seems that there is a bit of graft material there. So remove them all and put in new uh, graft material would be better option for the bios collagen and you know i cannot uh, name product names but genografts collagen based graft material using that or doing just genograft comparing the two uh, in terms of contouring collagen having collagen is easier but uh, there is a price issue and um, if you cannot opt for that, then just doing genograft, uh, there will be no problem. But the second question was, uh, you know, sorry for naming product name, but Osmon Collagen and, you know, whether you use Oskide, um, I cannot uh, tell you because I also do not have experience. But if it's a commonly uh, generalized recognized material, it will be okay. But depending on the company, different results uh, can be obtained. For some cases, even for ge same genograph, there's a foci, equine, or bovine. So depending on which type, different results are uh, there. So the best option will be you know, like give, if you could give me details, uh, then I could also post my uh, answer. So ask uh, people around you, you know, might be better uh, because naming product name, I'm a bit cautious about that. So I hope before your understanding. Well, thank you for that. Now, if I may uh, ask you to summarize uh, today's uh, talk. Dr. Park. Well, I learned a lot today. So, so Dr. Yang has said 
there should be your own criteria when to remove it and which procedure are you going to use it something that you are familiar with uh, and other, applying that in a similar situation make it your routine would be best yes i have a similar case for this inquired case as i always say it's uh, you place implant first so there was no treatment plan because there is a too wide distance between implants and because of that uh, the procedure contour for cleansing up could not be made and the GBL was also not done very well so due to these complications uh, the result was failure so again implant you first have to have a treatment plan and based on that the procedures that I'm comfortable with would give you the most predictable results and looking at this case uh, I think you the inquired per, uh, the dentist would also have thought a lot so I think um, for me in that situation the because wisdom teeth tooth was still there and that's why uh, the implant became that way and the other procedure came that way so for me I would number uh, because of number 37 the implant uh, if the implant positioning that I'm delivering the new implant uh, you know it would uh, change the position so uh, I would think about that and you know use the best option that I'm comfortable with and it's easiest for me now let me summarize today so, uh, discussion number 37 single implant uh, yes you can place it but if possible position and all the considers uh, removing number 36 would also be better and in terms of a predictable socket preservation now using membrane would be better and I think uh, in terms of contouring uh, collagen would be good but if you want the product name you know ask uh, offline and lastly I have a question to Dr. Yang. You said many times, you know, the it's a good if you can cleanse the prosthesis well. But for patient, you have uh, prosthesis that has not much of a room. Then in that case, there could be gingiva inflammation, but the bone is not resolved. But there is a pa discomfort for patient. Then what could you do? For me, actually, the prosthesis, whether it's cement type or screw retain type, it will be different. If it's screw retain type, then you could remove it and contour. But if it's cement type, then you know it's not easy. Then in that case, very cautiously, soft tissue without um, damaging it, embrasure, high speed bar, uh, I use that. Then sufficiently, you can clean it. But uh, the, the soft tissue could be lacerated so you have to be very cautious because on the x-ray how much uh, contouring you can done needs to be determined first so soft tissue after contouring you it fills up again inside and if it's filled not again then you could say you know use you know interdental brush otherwise if there's a discomfort then you could do it again maybe well, thank you for that. I'm learning a lot today, too. Anyways, um, that's it for this case discussion session. I hope it has been helpful to you. Uh, and I'd like to thank you, uh, viewers, for uh, watching this session. And I would like to thank three uh, dentists for their um, discussion. And this has been Kim Sejin, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.